Okay, so it is uh, 9.35. Uh, hello again, and thank you very much for coming. I am very proud to, to present the result of the Emul Radio for Ride project. Uh, and um, I will introduce the, the project and recall you the, the agenda. Uh, if uh, my screen <laughs> is okay to work. Okay, the Emil Radio for Rail is uh, for emulation of radio access technology for railway communication. Uh, so I hope that everybody uh, can see the screen. Uh, Emil Radio is a collaborative H2020 European project financed by in the framework of the Shift to Rail program. And uh, it was a response to an open call uh, launched by uh, Shift to Rail and particularly by the X2Rail 3, uh, uh, X2Rail 1 and X2Rail 3 projects. Uh, the project uh, is uh, led uh, by University Gustave Eiffel and the partner are uh, University of Lille, Technical University of Denmark, Ikerlan in Spain, Radio Labs in Italy, Metro de Madrid in Spain, and Urnex uh, in Germany. Uh, to test a new system or any kind of new system in real condition on the track, uh, you know that it is very expensive and very long. So the, the idea of the project, Emil Radio for Rail, uh, was to um, answer uh, a zero on-site testing approach for telecommunication system. Then the project objective is to develop an hardware and software emulation platform to evaluate the performances of new communication system prototypes developed by industry and particularly the prototypes uh, that have been developed uh, in the framework of uh, X2Rail3 project. So the aim of the project is to replace the air gap and the telecommunication network by hardware and software able to mimic the real radio environment and the network equipment. The platform, uh, we have several platforms uh, we are able to command uh, from an external computer, you, you will see that. And the platform are based on the combination of several bricks. First, we are uh, taking into account some commercial existing hardware equipments. Uh, then uh, we have some homemade uh, hardware equipments and um, we have open source software, particularly the open air interface uh, system. Uh, then we have uh, selected uh, ad hoc channel models and uh, ad hoc perturbation. Uh, we, we, we spend some time to, to have uh, literature analysis and based also on the knowledge of participant, and uh, uh, we were able to put everything together thanks to the know-how of the partners uh, who has implemented uh, the part uh, of the platform. Uh, so um, the high-level feature of the platform um, are, are able to reproduce railway environment to test in laboratory, uh, sorry, I, there is some problem. Uh, so the platform are able to reproduce uh, railway environment to test in laboratories the industrial prototypes uh, developed by industry. Uh, we have two options, connection at RF level and connection at IP level. And uh, the platform can be used by uh, any industrial or academic partners that want to test a new wireless communication system. And uh, if we change uh, the channel uh, models and the uh, perturbation models, we are able to treat any kind of transport mode. So the high level vision of the final platform is as follow. Uh, thanks to discussion uh, with uh, X2Rail3 partners uh, at the beginning of the project and uh, due to, to the uh, choice they, they made for their uh, prototypes, uh, we decided uh, to concentrate uh, the platform on the possibility to emulate uh, um, uh, different uh, radio access technology. Uh, the one LTE public uh, network, one LTE private network, 
one Wi-Fi net, um, system or network and a, a satellite uh, system. So as you can see, we are able to emulate uh, the ground side, the train side. Uh, we are able to emulate uplink and downlink um, channels. And the satellite is connected uh, at IP level and the other are connected at uh, RF level. So we just change uh, the antennas by uh, connecting um, the RF power to the channel emulators. Then we are uh, an external uh, PC, uh, which is able to control everything with a very big screen uh, in which we have uh, uh, all the windows to control uh, the different part of the platform, as you will see. Uh, so this is a low level uh, design uh, pro uh, proposal for the platform. Uh, we have followed during uh, the project and that will be deta detailed now. So I will, um, I will uh, recall the agenda. Uh, then uh, uh, after my presentation that is now finished, uh, Juan Moreno will present uh, the result of the selection of suitable uh, radio channel models. Uh, then we will have a description of the channel emulators. Then uh, Laurent will uh, present uh, a selection of suitable perturbation models. We will have a coffee break. And then we will uh, go inside the presentation of the different platforms, the Wi-Fi one, the LTE, all the, all the, um, uh, all the uh, different bricks I mentioned. Uh, then uh, we will have a presentation of a different approach based on pure simulation using a discrete event simulator. And then we will have the launch and uh, at, the, at the beginning of the afternoon, uh, we will have the presentation of the satellite platform and the successful um, of this uh, integration with um, Itachi. Uh, then uh, the leader of x 2 3 WP3 will, uh, will uh, give some words about uh, the collaboration, then we will conclude and there is a big slot for discussion, question, and so on. So I leave the floor to Juan. Uh, I stop my sharing and then Juan, you, you, you can share. Okay, uh, uh, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, you can put on uh, presentation mode, please. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so uh, here we are. Uh, I will uh, brief you the, the general uh, conclusions of the, of the selection of suitable radio channel models, okay? Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to, to present uh, my company, which is Metro Madrid. Uh, I think that um, probably uh, most of you uh, know us, uh, and uh, I will be very brief. Uh, we are the, the, the second largest uh, metro network in the European Union and the largest in, uh, in Spain with almost 300 kilometers of network with 300 sorry 313 metro lines uh, and uh, uh, almost 700 million passengers in, in not not in this year unfortunately but uh, the year before the the covid pandemics um, we also, uh, apart from being, you know, a, a, an operator and a, um, a infrastructure manager in uh, in our network, we are also um, uh, focused on uh, consultation uh, uh, projects for uh, for other uh, for other networks, and also uh, in the last ten years we have been uh, working in a lot of research projects like uh, like this one, like Emurati for Rain. And, but also in, in some others. This is a, a selection of uh, some of the, I think, most interesting ones in the, in the, last, uh, in the last years. Okay, some of them are still uh, ongoing, like next year, next year, this one. 
and some others uh, not uh, have uh, have uh, are not active now. Okay, so um, that's all from from the metro from the metro side. Um, in this presentation, uh, I will I will uh, let you know uh, the the channels that we have selected for to, to be emulated in the in the platform. Okay, but uh, before uh, going into that detail, uh, I need to explain a little bit what's uh, the basics of uh, channel modeling. Okay, the 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 some you know some some ideas uh, on the on the theory of this uh, in order to let you know uh, why we have chosen uh, some models. And just after that, uh, I will uh, explain very, very briefly the methodology that we have, that we have followed uh, in, this, in this selection, okay? Because we, we, we can say, uh, uh, okay, the, these are the models. You will probably ask, uh, why, why not these, these others? Or uh, I know this model that uh, works uh, very good in this environment, okay? So, I will try to to explain uh, these three things. Okay, so um, uh, as you all of you know, uh, railway it's not a unique environment. Okay, uh, it's uh, very diverse. We have um, tunnels like in subways, uh, and also we have uh, rural areas. Uh, we have cuttings, viaducts, urban. Uh, and many many different uh, uh, scenarios okay so we need to address uh, many of them okay it's impossible to address all of them but uh, we can uh, try to do it with um, with um, a qualified uh, set of uh, of these uh, of these uh, scenarios okay for example even in the in the tunnel scenario uh, there are a lot of differences between them Okay, so uh, it's it's uh, impossible to 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 consider uh, everything. Uh, regarding the channel modeling, uh, it's uh, the mobile radio channel. Okay, it's what you can see in the picture. Uh, one of two of the two sides of the of the communication uh, link, it's uh, in motion. Okay, in this case, we we have depicted the 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 uh, uh, vehicle okay it's like a van uh, moving uh, down here in the right and uh, the the transmitter is in the uh, the transmitter is in the in the in the top uh, left okay as you can see here we can have uh, in many scenarios a direct path in some others not but uh, we can we can assume this one for for um, simplicity in this explanation and there are also uh, reflected paths okay this one is reflected in the ground and uh, gets to the to the receiver this one it's uh, and, and reflected in this uh, in this building okay and some others may get diffracted or scattered by other obstacles that are in the in the in between the transmitter and the receiver. Okay, so uh, this is the general scenario that we need to to deal in mobile communications. Okay, not only for railways, of course, but uh, in in case uh, some somebody is in is in movement. Okay, the distance between the transmitter and the receiver is also of uh, importance. And the problem is that all this uh, makes the signal in the receiver to be uh, unstable. Okay, this uh, instability uh, is what uh, makes it challenging to to have this uh, this communication. Okay, yeah, and even more if you wanted to have a, a high uh, a high standard, let's say, of uh, rel reliability and availability in the channel. For example, if you if you want to do some uh, critical uh, uh, communications, okay like signaling and things like that so a channel model uh, it's uh, it's only a mathematical uh, representation of uh, of all these phenomena that uh, we have seen between the transmitter and the receiver okay for example the path loss this is the attenuation uh, it's something that we need to to take into account and also the reflection diffraction scattering wave guiding which is something that happens in tunnels and um, some other effects uh, related to 
to to the mobility okay to the to having the one of the one of the parts of the communication in the in motion okay so uh, this means that uh, the channel uh, will be time variant okay we, we won't have an stable channel uh, if uh, if uh, some of the for example the transmitter or the receiver is in motion okay and we need to have an accurate description of the channel in order to to emulate it and it's it's not only uh, it's not enough to have the the path loss only for example uh, the okumura ata it's a very famous model but it only addresses the the the, the path loss okay the, attenu the attenuation of the of the signal we need to have in, to take into account some uh, other effects small scale effects like multipath uh, doppler spread uh, etc okay so that's why we need an, an accurate uh, channel model very uh, very uh, representative of, of, of all these effects okay so i will explain now uh, very briefly uh, um, some uh, basics about uh, these uh, these uh, effects okay i i won't i don't uh, want to give you a short course on this okay so this is a very very deep uh, world uh, as you know but i will try to explain two or three concepts in order to 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 let you understand the the the, the models that we have chosen okay so the first concept that we need to understand is the multipath. Multipath means uh, it's self-explicative, uh, I think. Um, you you send something and you get multiple copies of this uh, of this uh, something that you have sent. Okay. In the diagram in the left, you can see that uh, the transmitter sends something, and given uh, the complexity of the environment, uh, there are a lot of reflections and you get not only one in the channel impulse response you don't get one copy you get multiple copies delayed in time uh, of uh, what you have sent okay so this is something that has uh, some implications because uh, you need to 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 understand that these copies are interfering um, uh, between them and also uh, they can interfere the next symbols that you are transmitting okay Another important concept that uh, uh, we need to, to take in mind is the Doppler spectrum. Okay, the Doppler spectrum it's a way to represent um, the the shift in the frequency uh, related to the to the movement of uh, either the transmitter or the or the receiver. Okay, uh, this means that uh, if the frequency is changing, you you will have a, a broadening of of the spectrum. Okay. And uh, uh, this is something that affects especially to multi-carrier modulations, which are uh, like OFDM, which is, uh, you know, the, the, the state of the art in, in uh, Wi-Fi and LTE and, and some other communication uh, systems. So it's something that uh, must be considered. The, the most common way to, to, to model this is uh, the, the Jake's spectrum, okay? Uh, this is the, the shape of this, uh, of this spectrum, okay? You have two singularities in the, in the maximum Doppler spread, which is in this case around 75 uh, Hertz, okay, here. So um, this is something that uh, in practice, it's not very common to work with this, but uh, it's the most usual way to 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 model it in uh, in academic books uh, etc so we have uh, many alternatives to this uh, jx spectrum but uh, but uh, i think it's enough uh, here to mention to mention this one uh, the thing is uh, and this is the the final uh, theoretical slide i think uh, it's that um, that uh, if the the channel impulse response is uh, finite, uh, this means that the tran the transfer the channel transfer function uh, will be frequency selective. Uh, and here you can you can see this. Um, uh, you can see the 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 channel impulse uh, response. Sorry, you, you can see this here, and this means that in uh, in uh, it's it's selective in in frequency okay so this is something that uh, it's also uh, remarkable uh, the summary of uh, all these uh, theoretical uh, things is that um, 
we can't assume in vehicular uh, scenarios that the channel is a linear time invariant okay so we must assume that it's a time variant okay and um, uh, in some cases it is slow uh, it's uh, these changes are slow but in some others not okay so so we we can't uh, have this in mind in particular uh, we have decided uh, to 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 use uh, tapping the line line uh, channel models okay uh, because the the platforms that uh, we had uh, uh, decided to use in this in this project and that my colleagues will explain later uh, uh, were based uh, in this okay and this kind of uh, channel uh, its channel model sorry is uh, is as follows in this expression it's it's easier to see in the in the picture okay we have uh, several um, we, we divide the, the delay domain domain in in several uh, discrete um, uh, slots, okay, or, or tabs, and all the multipath components that are in this uh, in this delay interval uh, are uh, grouped together, okay, and represented by this complex coefficient, the the c uh, coefficient, okay, and uh, therefore you can model the channel as a um, as a sum of taps delayed uh, by a discrete uh, uh, time okay so you will have uh, several multipath components here some others here some others here and you can model separately each uh, tap okay uh, so this is something that it's very very good for for emulation and, and very robust and uh, as we will see uh, now uh, very very it's very popular uh, in the in the scientific literature okay the methodology that we have followed uh, to to select the channels it's uh, first of all uh, we, we we looked the, the in the in the literature in the scientific literature for for the channels like this and we found uh, that we have in some cases we had uh, we have more than one so we decided to go to the to the channel that uh, to the channel model that uh, it's um, let's say more uh, contained more information okay because some some of the models uh, lacked from uh, from from important information like the doppler spectrum or things like that we also wanted uh, these channel models to be in the frequencies of interest for our systems so if we wanted to work with lte and wi-fi we, we try to 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 use models uh, close to the frequencies of interest okay and uh, finally we tried as well to to use uh, models that could be trusted okay if you read the paper and you see okay this is a nonsense uh, you, you discard this this model okay fortunately this was not the the case but uh, we we also uh, pay attention to this okay so uh, our idea was to have uh, channel models with all this information okay the number of tabs of course this is very relevant the delay associated to each tab of the tdl model uh, the relative uh, power these these three are the the basic information okay you don't have a tdl model if you don't have these three ones and also the speed the speed of the train it's very very important uh, the doppler spectrum which is um, unfrequent to see in some in some models the frequency range okay where the measurements were taken and so on the bandwidth for the measurements which impacts in the resolution for the for the for the model okay the resolution of the multipath that you can that you can see and group into one tab and also the the diversity if it's a MIMO system or uh, or not okay so these are the the basic parameters and here um, okay uh, the there are i will i will debrief uh, in uh, six or seven minutes uh, the the channels that we that we have uh, selected you have all the details in our deliverable uh, we have divided the railway world let's say in five uh, in five scenarios the first one is the hilly scenario okay and we have uh, identified uh, this this model you can see that uh, divides the 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 scenario into regions okay with uh, with some delays 
and the, its associated relative power, and more importantly, it contains the the Doppler the Doppler shift. Okay, it's uh, the frequency is suitable for our emulation, and the speed it's uh, it's uh, good for uh, high speed uh, lines. Okay, this is another one for a Healy scenario. Okay. Uh, with uh, shorter uh, bandwidth and a different uh, frequency. So this one is uh, more suitable for, for LTE, for example. Okay, uh, so this is the Healy, the rural scenario, uh, which is, you know, very common in, uh, in high speed lines and regional trains and things like that. We found uh, this, uh, this uh, TDL, uh, channel model, which is, as you can see, very, very simple, only three, three taps. The speed is not um, the, the maximum one for high speed. The bandwidth is a little bit short, but it's, uh, it's a, a, a good channel model and coherent what, uh, on what we, we know about this. This is another, another channel model of the ITU. Uh, which, as you can see, uh, you have uh, many more um, uh, tabs and also information about the angles, uh, which uh, our platforms uh, do not uh, consider. Okay, the speed is uh, 350, and the bandwidth it's uh, it's really high, and that's why this channel has uh, a lot of resolution in in terms of uh, the multipath components in in some uh, uh, that we that we can see in in the tabs. Okay. And this is another another one. You you have all the all the references here. If you, in case you have uh, more details, okay. This is the this is the fa very famous winner two uh, channel models. One of the scenarios to, uh, that is considered here uh, uh, is uh, suitable for for uh, uh, rural areas, okay, in high speed. Uh, the thing is that uh, here the the best one we we have three uh, and uh, we we decided to to go uh, to the to the winner two because uh, it's a, a remarkable effort in terms of channel modeling taking into account a lot of a lot of uh, um, uh, scenarios and the frequency range is uh, really high the bandwidth is also uh, really high. Uh, but uh, even this model, it's not perfect because there is no uh, Doppler um, spectrum uh, description. Uh, the frequency range comes from two to six uh, gigahertz. So we are missing, for example, the the the, the frequencies, uh, the GSMR frequencies, for example, which are not of interest in this project. But we wanted also to work uh, below two gigahertz. Okay. Uh, so uh, this means that uh, even the most accurate and famous and uh, relevant channel models are not are not perfect. Uh, okay, this is this is another one. Okay, uh, that takes takes into account uh, lower frequencies. And. Uh, and uh, it's in this case, uh, it's not. Uh, there is not uh, uh, a lot of information about the Doppler spectrum. Okay, in only in one in one of the models that we found. Okay, and the problem is that we can't have a mix uh, taking uh, some parts from one model to the other. So that's that's impossible. So we need to to choose the the best one uh, uh, entirely. Okay, another relevant scenario is the cutting. Uh, the cutting scenario, uh, we found some uh, channel models, especially in uh, in China, and uh, you can see here the details. Uh, it contains uh, information about the Doppler spectrum. The speed is not very high. The frequency is suitable for, for for example, for Wi-Fi, uh, and uh, it has uh, four taps. Okay. This is a different one, seven taps, uh, higher bandwidth, uh, not very high speed, and uh, very, very similar uh, center frequency. And it has uh, as well a Doppler spectrum, uh, information about the Doppler spectrum. Okay, so here we, we took the decision based on the frequency range and the complexity of the model. Of course, it's easier to work with a four taps model than working with a seven taps model. If I'm not wrong, uh, we can work with, uh, 
with both of them in our platforms. But for example, if we had 20 tabs, maybe the, the emulators can't uh, bear with that. Okay, so we need to, to address that as well. And finally, uh, the tunnel scenario. Okay, uh, in tunnels, uh, we were not able to find any uh, TDL based model uh, for tunnels. Uh, and uh, here it's uh, our opinion. Uh, it's it's very difficult to 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 perform uh, good measurements uh, uh, to have a model in tunnels because the the resolution that you need it's uh, in it's of uh, nanoseconds instead of uh, let's say microseconds or or hundred of nanoseconds, which is the most common. Uh, uh, delay figures for outdoor scenarios uh, and this means that you need um, a bandwidth uh, really higher uh, in order to have resolutions of uh, of nanoseconds okay you will need to have one gigahertz uh, for example of uh, the bandwidth uh, in your channel sounder in order to have a resolution of nanoseconds so we decided to go get some help from our friends of the beijing jiaotong university that uh, have a very strong tool which is the ray tracer okay a simulator that um, we used to to develop a model for two channels okay the high speed tunnel which is this one that you can see in this picture okay uh, a big tunnel and the subway tunnel okay both of them as you can see are rectangular uh, and uh, we gave them some uh, some inputs okay we wanted to to see uh, the behavior in um, 2.4 gigahertz okay uh, in order to emulate uh, wi-fi in this scenario the bandwidth uh, will be 20 megahertz and the speed, uh, the maximum one for each scenario, 350 kilometers per hour uh, for high speed and 120 uh, for subways. As far as I know, there are no trains now uh, running faster than this on, on each uh, scenario. Okay, And also, uh, we requested them to, to simulate a MIMO 2x2 uh, uh, system okay we also took into account the influence of the train which is something that uh, that's missing in almost every other tdl channel model and we we know that uh, the the presence of the of the vehicle of the train uh, impacts uh, the the propagation inside the tunnel okay the affects the channel and these are the the let's say the sketchup uh, model of the high speed train here and the subway train okay this one is based on a, on a spanish uh, train the talgo train uh, the 102 and this one is based on a metro de madrid uh, train but i think that uh, are uh, representatively enough in, in both cases and this is the the channel model that we that we obtained in subway tunnel uh, a, sh a sh shortest uh, a tunnel we we were able to see five taps these are the the relative power and uh, we also uh, get um, got sorry information about the the fading uh, distribution inside each one of the taps uh, and also the shape of the doppler spectrum and uh, the fitting model for for the for the for the different parameters of, of this uh, Doppler spectrum. Okay, so this is a very, very complete model because it's based only on simulations. Okay, uh, we decided we, we had the, the taps spaced uh, eight nanoseconds and uh, we saw the, that there were some differences between uh, one scenario and the other. The, the, the most important one is that in, in the larger tunnel, in the high speed tunnel, we have uh, 11 taps. And in the subway one, we have uh, we have five, and there are also some some other uh, differences. Okay, this is just um, a quick uh, let's say um, explanation uh, about the how this this channel model is uh, is uh, obtained. You you see here the there are many rays that are launched and uh, get uh, from the transmitter to the receiver okay some get uh, some are direct one is direct sorry between the transmitter and the receiver and many others uh, are reflected uh, reflected in the surface of the train in the track in the walls and whatever and all the all of them are uh, are uh, summed 
uh, are added and uh, considered in order to, to have this model. In the left, in the bottom left, uh, you can see the channel impulse response with five tabs, okay? And uh, here you can see the channel uh, transfer function. Okay, uh, you can see that uh, that this this channel uh, the transfer function uh, shows some uh, variation here, some selectivity, let's say, uh, and this is because the fading and the and also the Doppler. Okay, uh, so this is uh, this is something that uh, you can uh, obtain from all the uh, TDL channels that we we have seen, but uh, this is a uh, only an example of this. Okay, so finally, uh, the conclusions uh, for all this uh, explanation is that we have divided the, the railway world into five scenarios, hilly, rural, cutting, viaduct, and tunnel. And we found uh, in the literature, we found the suitable models for the first four of them, and but not for tunnels. And uh, we decided to develop uh, a new one uh, uh, and uh, now we, we we have a model for for this. Uh, the decision uh, when we had more than more than one channel is uh, was was taken um, uh, considering the 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 relevance and the completeness of the information that the model had, and also um, uh, on the on the frequencies and the speed and some other parameters that uh, were of importance for us okay and finally uh, this is a personal reflection i think that marion shares with me <laughs> that uh, if we want to have uh, um, more accurate channel models uh, if, we, if we want to, to, to do an accurate emulation, uh, we need to, to do more measurements, especially in some, in some bands that are of, of interest for, for railways. Okay, so this is everything from my side. You have here the reference list, and also you have deliverable 1.3 1, 1, 1 with all the details on, on this. If you have any question, I will be happy to, to try to answer them. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Juan. Um, if you have uh, any question, I don't see questions in the chat, but uh, we have uh, some minutes. Uh, if someone wants to ask a question, the deliverable will be published uh, soon. Uh, first, we, we have submitted the journal paper on, on this work, so we, we would like to to wait uh, before publishing on the website the, the report. Uh, Marion? Yes? I try to. I can ask a question perhaps to start the, <laughs> the yes. move. Uh, I was wondering, but we, we worked a little bit together, so I know a little bit the content, but I was wondering what makes, uh, uh, what validates a model? What, what, when, when can we say that the model is valid for such an environment? <laughs> And then do we have ideas about the, the extent of the validity of the model? Meaning, uh, how, how, yes, how do the people validate the models That's in, the, in the literature? Juan, you want to answer? Or... Yeah, why not? I think that's, <laughs> a, that's a very, very big question. <laughs> Uh, the, the thing is that, uh, uh, in, in my opinion, you can you can do it in in several in several ways. You you can validate, for example, the 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 delay figures taking into account the the environment. Uh, if if the environment, the surrounding environment, let's say it's not properly described, and then uh, they state uh, some uh, delay figures, uh, so maybe you you can trust them. And also the equipment, the electronics that uh, is behind the, the channel sounding, uh, you you see that when when they describe them. So it's it's not a, it's it's more about the feeling that the paper gives you uh, than uh, some some other. Uh, if you see in some cases, uh, many cases, uh, they are focused in 900 megahertz band and also in 2.4. So even maybe you can compare some papers with uh, with the other papers in that band. So it's from a from a general point of view to answer your question, uh, 
I think the statistical modeling is uh, when, when you, you, you have the model, you compare with the measurement generally, uh, with the distribution you have and so on. Uh, but I uh, do not know any papers uh, that uh, can uh, confirm exactly that the model, uh, it, it just uh, the classical statistical approach. So we hope to have enough um, samples to be able to statistically mod model the system. And then uh, sometimes, uh, yes, uh, I think there, there, there are some uh, incertitudes that could be small or big. And the interest also of Emil Radio for Raid platform uh, could be uh, one day to compare um, uh, real behavior of a system with the behavior in, the give, in a given environment. Uh, I hope we answer your question. <laughs> Yeah, oh, Marion, a... there are some questions in the chat also. Uh, yes, so I can see that there is a, a question about a special scenario like a moving object uh, in chanting areas and as a reflector. Um, we, we didn't find uh, this type of scenario uh, in the literature. Uh, it is why uh, we think that uh, uh, the, this question of uh, channel modeling and measurement on the track at radio level are often uh, considered by a uh, railway operator as uh, useless. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, and uh, due to the fact, for example, that FRMCS frequency has just been um, fixed now, uh, it could be really, really important to, to have uh, this kind of project to, to be able to, if we want to go to, to zero on-site testing, uh, we need first uh, to have uh, the models uh, to, to, to do this. Uh, another question is about uh, the plausible under time in a moving vehicle scenario. Uh, the, this, um, this was not uh, um, investigated in the channel models uh, vision. Uh, you can have some result on the presentation uh, Mohamed Kassab uh, will, uh, will give, and uh, it's uh, quite uh, difficult uh, to, to do this. And we hope uh, we, we have not the possibility to measure this with the platform uh, uh, at the end uh, of, the, of the project. But normally we, we could, uh, we could uh, do this uh, with a specific scenario we have not implemented yet. Uh, there is... Uh, how can we take into account the track layout, uh, like curves and track uh, profile? Uh, it is uh, the track layout is more or less uh, taken into account in the in the channel models. It is why we 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 found in the literature uh, uh, various um, we separated in areas like uh, 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 cutting, like rural, like stations. Etc. So the um, from a statistical point of view, uh, you can have the the result uh, obtained at uh, system level using uh, each uh, scenario. Then you can other kind of tool uh, called uh, I don't remember to, some tools mixed uh, ray tracing and the motion of the train. Uh, but it, it's very complicated uh, because for each position of the train, uh, you need to, uh, to have a statistical representation of the channel. So this means that artificially, you need to set up a lot of, a lot of uh, channel uh, representation. Uh, so all the questions are uh, related to the different scenario on the channel model. Uh, have you considered approaching trend on neighbor track at high speed? And uh, we, we didn't do that except for the tunnel uh, uh, scenario with some influence of the train in the, in the tunnel uh, with the ray tracing approach. But in the literature, uh, we, we didn't have this kind of scenario. And uh, we hope, we wish that uh, some, one day some uh, railway operator uh, will be okay to launch this kind of project and uh, with trials, and we are ready to, to contribute. 
I think now we have to switch to the other presentation, to the presentation of uh, Raoul and myself. I hope uh, I uh, answer a part of the question. And uh, for those who can be at the end of the day, there will be a, a big slot for all the questions. So thank you very much, uh, Juan, uh, for uh, being the first, uh, <laughs> the first speaker of the of the day. So Raoul, are you there? Oh uh ho. -huh. Hello, morning. Yeah, you can share your screen normally. Uh, okay. Everybody. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. I, I yeah. give uh, permission to everyone. Okay, uh, you can uh, you will pass the the slide for me after to save time. Okay. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I will make now a short presentation about the RF channel mo uh, channel emulators that we have used to uh, actually implement the channel models or some of the channel models that uh, Juan has just explained. So uh, first, of all, first of all, let me introduce my, my company. I'm from Ikerlan and uh, we are a research and development center, a technology center. And uh, we are committed to develop a technology for the companies that we have uh, nearby to try to transform their products and services. Uh, a few numbers is that we are about uh, 350 people. Uh, we usually have a budget about uh, 24 million euros that come approximately half of them from uh, public, uh, <clears throat> public fundings and half of them from private uh, companies, uh, projects that we do for private companies. And uh, we work in uh, in several sectors like uh, capital goods, transport, energy, and so on. So uh, where we are or we uh, where we intend to to be is uh, let's say between the university and the companies. The university have a very academic uh, uh, profile, let's say. Uh, industries uh, have a very product-oriented uh, target. So we are in the middle with a very technological specialization. And we aim to uh, transfer our knowledge into the companies. And uh, OK, we work in, in three main areas of focus, small focus capacities. We have uh, the electronics, information, and communication technologies area, the energy and power electronics area, and uh, advanced manufacturing areas. Myself and the knowledge we have applied for this project, for this project, this emulator project, it's the hardware and communication systems uh, where I, I belong. So, just after this introduction from myself, okay, uh, what are the RF channel emulators in in emulator for race? Okay, here you can see the complete uh, platform that uh, Mario has detailed before, in where we can see the the control PC, the satellite emulation part, the Wi-Fi emulation part, the LTE emulation part, and the backhaul uh, emulation part. So into the platform, uh, the, the, the users usually enter into IP frames and get out from IP frames. But uh, in, even if the input and output are IP, IP frames, in the middle, at least for the terrestrial viewers, what we do is uh, pass them into RF, either with an LT dongle or a Wi-Fi dongle or the, their counterparts, the uh, Wi-Fi access point and the, uh, the NOD. So uh, what we finally do is a real RF emulation of the channel models that uh, Juan has presented. And for that, we have here the RF channel emulator, one here and one here. So uh, what are ch uh, RF channel emulators for? Okay, they are in charge of modifying in real time the RF signals according to the selected channel models. And uh, they aim to get uh, repetitive results so that uh, we can test things properly uh, in a laboratory uh, environment. So for this project, we have uh, two implementations of uh, channel emulators. One uh, based in instrumentation that has been uh, mainly used for LTE 
and another uh, custom built uh, channel emulator uh, that has been developed for this for this project. So uh, now Marion and I we, we will both detail these two two emulators. Okay, uh, this is the one for uh, the instrumentation one and the one for uh, the custom built. So regarding the custom built uh, channel emulator, it has been uh, built by Ikerland for this project. And as I have said, it aims for to offer repeatable emulations of fair channel conditions. It's based on a tab delay lane, uh, as all the models that has been selected were of this type. And uh, the implementation is made in two, three parts, let's say. The baseband processing, this is the implementation of the tab delay lines, are, is made in th inside a single ultra scale uh, FPGA or system on chip. Uh, the <clears throat> the tab delay lines themselves are implemented in the, in VHDL into the FPA part, and the control of the of the vanishing or of all the parameters is done into the ARM uh, cores that uh, run inside the, the this device. Besides this, we also run in one of in one of the other colors a Linux system. Uh, that controls the screen and so on for the user control. And uh, surrounding all, all this, uh, what we have is uh, our, uh, analog RF front ends, also custom built with uh, discrete devices that uh, allows us to, to control the, the RF band, the, the path loss, and so on. So, uh, which are the key features of this uh, emulator? Okay, uh, it has uh, four bidirectional RF ports, so we are able to we could emulate up to a two by two MIMO system. Uh, we are able to work from 400 megahertz to 600 so to six hertz uh, bands uh, with a 10 megahertz uh, signal bandwidth, and we are able to uh, implement up to tap, uh, 10 taps uh, per channel. And the, the emulator supports the typical emulator, uh, the typical uh, char uh, characteristics of the channel models, like a small scale multipath fading, the Doppler fading, path loss, shadowing, and, and so on. And this is a little bit the, the block diagram. We have in this standard path the RF to IF conversion states that it's done in, in the analog domain. Then we enter the FPA with an analog to, the, to digital converter or to digital to analog converter. And inside the FPA, we have the, the tab delay lines. And as I have said, we have a Linux size system there, uh, which uh, offers a, a control G implemented with Qt, in which we can control the RF ports, the Doppler frequencies, the, the, each of the lines would be the each of the tabs of the model. We control also the input power, output power, and, and so on. So, Mario, now if you want. Yes. So, um, due to the fact that uh, unfortunately your uh, emulator uh, has not enough uh, input and output, uh, we have uh, we had the great uh, chance and to to discuss with uh, Keysight. And they um, they accept uh, to 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 give us uh, their uh, nice propsim uh, uh, real time radio channel emulator uh, during several months. So uh, it's uh, really a big big thanks to them because they they allow us to connect uh, uh, all the platform because uh, even if the LTE part wa was on were on CISO. Uh, if you remember, we, ne we need to connect together uh, one public LTE, one um, private LTE, and the Wi-Fi. Uh, so in total, uh, we need uh, five uh, input and uh, five outputs. Uh, so the prop sim, uh, I will not enter too much in the detail. It, uh, it's a very nice uh, equipment, also very complex. Uh, the choice we made before about tape delay line model uh, was uh, mainly uh, driven driven by the the, 
we, we would like to have something simple, simple first for this project because uh, the main work was on the development of the platform, not, not uh, on the implementation of the channel. Uh, so we, we decided to, to, to be on tab line model, but the PropSim allows uh, to, to use the geometrical uh, channel model. Uh, next slide. Uh, so you, you can see here uh, the PropSim uh, uh, equipment uh, at uh, IRSICA where all the platform uh, have been integrated. Uh, you can see that uh, it is quite easy to, uh, to, to introduce the channel. Uh, we, we, there is a graphical unit interface like uh, the Ikerlan the channel. And we have to take into account the, some um, delay, uh, fixed delay introduced by the, by the emulator, uh, but uh, it's the principle of channel emulator. You have uh, some delay on the electronic and uh, also some, uh, some power, uh, but we, we manage uh, to, to, to do this. So this is an example with uh, uh, one uplink and downlink uh, system, and uh, you you can see on the on the other screen screen uh, all the platform connected with the five uh, uh, five uh, channel. Next, please. I think it's the last one. Yes, <laughs> uh, just uh, here an image of uh, of a six uh, six taps uh, channel models, uh, and we can change the speed. We can affect uh, different fading. Uh, to each taps, and uh, if we can change the speed, we can choose the Doppler spectrum. And as uh, Juan presented before, we mainly uh, have chosen uh, the classical uh, Doppler spectrum uh, like Jake's, but uh, this can be changed. Uh, the, the aim of the project uh, was not uh, was to test or to have a proof of concept uh, to do this with the platform, not to, to work. and. Uh, we hope uh, to have the opportunity one day to to have uh, uh, to buy this equipment in the future between uh, different labs. Uh, I think it's the last one, so thank you. We are a bit uh, um, short on time, uh, so I want to thank again uh, uh, Keysight uh, because the, the last part of the project uh, has been uh, facilitated uh, thanks to them. Also because uh, due to the COVID, uh, it was very complex uh, because everything was blocked. And thanks to them, we had the equipment in uh, uh, at the end of July, if I remember correctly. And uh, we, we were able to do everything uh, thanks to the fact that the partner uh, have sent all the platform to, to Lille. Uh, so the next uh, presentation is uh, uh, by uh, Laurent Clavier uh, from uh, University of Lille about the perturbation we have considered, uh, a kind of uh, uh, literature review and also solution to implement. And uh, obviously in the result, uh, we, we had not the time to test everything and uh, uh, this project is a research project and mainly a proof of concept that we can do a lot of things with the platform and the solution uh, the partner has have proposed. So Laurent. Uh, okay. Do you see my screen and do you hear me? Uh, perfect, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to start. Uh, so so one, one next step in the, in the um, emulation of, uh, of uh, communication link in ray ray communication was to look a little bit at the interference we can uh, have around the system so this is uh, the goal of this first uh, discussion uh, just to have a look oh, I've got to change my slides this is so first uh, I will present a little bit University of Lille but it's uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big stuff so I will be very short uh, so, University of Lille is a pluridisciplinary university, of course, with four main scientific poles. One is scientific, science and technologies, which is the one uh, we are concerned with, but of course you've got lots of different stuff, like health, law, arts, etc. Um, 
there is in the science and technology area there is 24 research units in every domain you can imagine we are mainly concerned by two <laughs> iemn and rck because I belong to the two. Uh, so just to be a little bit more detailed, IEMN is an electronic, microelectronic and nanotechnology institute. They go from really making the components and the nanostructures to the systems themselves, and especially in telecommunication. This is one area, but you've got other specialization area. And IRCK is another lab which is a sort of, of joint <laughs> joint lab where you people from different labs will join to make interdisciplinary research uh, so this is very important nowadays nowadays and you've got four main themes there from bio inspired stuff to tactile and just interaction but the, the goal is really to have interaction between different disciplines and why IRCK is and IEMN are involved in this mainly because we have a telecom platform platform which is more than telecom but with telecom facilities where we can do a lot of stuff in, in radio communications i will not detail here but uh, you will see part of it during the, the day so now we are going to talk about perturbations perturbation in railway communication and uh, um, Okay, what we know is that the railway is a complex system. You've got communications sometimes that are very important and you must not lose them. So we, we want, if we want to emulate the channel, we need to take into account things that, <laughs> unexpected things that can degrade the communication. So the first step for us is to investigate what type of perturbations uh, we can encounter in a, a railway communication and uh, how we can include them into the emulation tool. So first, the, the, the agenda is the following. I will try to identify these different perturbation stores and see how, in the second part, how we can introduce them and then summarize the three selected scenarios we, we plan to, <laughs> to implement in this project and conclude. So when I started reading about the special environment in, in railway communication, so I found four types, four, four origin, physical origin of, of perturbation. One which will be due, due to the electromagnetic environment. So it's not necessarily communicating things, but you've got a lot of <laughs> electricity running in this equipment so it, it makes some electromagnetic fields and okay the question is do we need to take them into account uh, you of course you have some network interference so this was this is quite true with with uh, cellular networks because more and more you've got this uh, intercell interference that, that you should take into account uh, but it's also very true for Wi-Fi communication, uh, especially because they are working on an on a unlicensed band. And then you can have different Wi-Fi access points, for instance, active, but also different other equipment in the same band. And it's perhaps important to take them into account. You also have, which is very typical from the railway environment, so perhaps people in, in, in here knows more about this than me, but you have natural electromagnetic interference sources, uh, like for instance, um, the contact between the pantograph and the catenary, which can send some really strong signals, very short but strong signals. And a fourth aspect that we should probably consider is illegal jamming because it's, it's becoming a big issue. Uh, you've got telecommunication jammers and probably you need to, to be aware of this and to try to find solutions to, <laughs> to fight against this. Um, so getting a little bit more into the detail, we try to identify the, 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 really the, the noises, sources that are relevant for us. Uh, so, for instance, all these um, electromagnetic sources that you can find in, in, in the railway environment, inside the machines or not, um, we don't really feel they are 
relevant because uh, what the what the frequencies they are emitting is is very different from the communications we are considering and if there is a little bit of uh, of uh, overlaps and probably it can be included in the ambient gaussian noise because it's it's quite low and it's not very significant much more significant we think is I will already give a word about that is the coexisting networks and the code channel interference. So, of course, this is very important. I personally didn't find much work related to this in the specific case of railway, and this railway is very specific due to its high mobility, and this, this probably can impact a lot the models we, we should have behind this, this type of interference. Uh, but of course, we 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 if we can identify a little bit more the context and the, 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 the environment where the chain is going to be, uh, then we could have models that, that take this interference into account. Uh, so just to detail a little bit this type of interference for those who do not <laughs> look at that very often. So uh, it's you've got a, a main link which is from your source to the destination and you've got other devices that are going to transmit so if it's a, if it's in a cellular network it should not happen a priori because the network is scheduling all the communication and uh, up to now all, most of the communications are orthogonal so you should not have any any confusion there um, but in fact you can have some some other cells that will transmit on the same frequency and you can have interference in wi-fi as i said before it's it's much more obvious you have a, a random access strategy and, and you can have interference so i will go through that very quick it's not very important what is relevant and what i want to mention there is that if you've got a, a random position of the of the nodes here what we usually do to model this is to use a Gaussian model, which is very easy and it can be implemented in the platform very easily. But probably we need to implement some more, some different types of, of, of nodes. But more research is needed in that field to, to have the good models for the train application. Okay, we found also other systems effect. I will not be too long on this, so like intercarrier interference or keyholes, but they are more related to Doppler effect and to the channel. So we do not think it is a perturbation to take that into account. And you, we also have what we call the unintentional jamming. So uh, other apparatus that do not communicate. So again, I will not take that into account because it's low on its other bands. You've got natural electromagnetic interference source. And I think this is very important and the pantograph to catenary contact is, is to be taken into account. So in the end, what we decided to, to keep in mind is these three types of interference. So network interference, which should play a big role, especially I think in Wi-Fi when the train is approaching the stations. We want to take the contact between the pantograph and the catenary. This is the second step. And we want to have the possibility to include illegal jamming to have a, an efficient model. Um, so how do we do that in the in the system so it's it's in the end it's quite easy if we want because it's additive noise so interference is an addition of something so an addition is quite easy to make however there are several ways to do it so if i just really <laughs> from from a <laughs> large view summarize the channel emulation you've got a signal generator which is your source you've got the channel emulator which is what uh, raul presented before and you've got the receiver so where do we introduce the, the interference we identify in fact two types of interference to give a, a short summary one which will be communication signals that will also go through a channel. So probably we need to introduce them into the channel emulator also with an independent channel sometimes, but this is important. And the type two, which are signals that will directly impact the receiver, especially you can see that for the um, uh, contact between uh, catenary and pantograph. 
this is a good example we've got a, a special case there when we if if we have to consider massive type communications in a station or something like that if it's important then in that case we will not be able to emulate uh, the true signal that will cross the channel but we have to emulate the result of many interference so the way to do it is we can introduce this signal either at the input of the channel emulator in point a there or at the input of the receiver in point b there so this will depend on the scenario on the possibilities of the system okay and the three i think i should not stay too long so i don't know how much time i have left <laughs> but um so you have to be quick. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that. But, so uh, the, the first, the first scenario is we introduce the signal at the input of. So this could be a concurrent transmission, if you want. So we've got a signal generator, and both are crossing the channel. So the channel could be, the channels could be independent. They could be different. They could have stati different statistical properties. If, the, for instance if the interferer is on the side of the receiver and not on the side of the source then of course the statistical property of this channel has to be different um, so this is one way to to introduce interference so this is typical in uh, network interference or eventually a jammer a jammer could be like that if we need to to cross a channel if we have a massive type of interference, so several interferers, we will not be able to put all of them through the channel emulator. So we need to have a, an emulation, a simulation of the resulting interference. And then we, it's easier to put it directly at the input of the receiver. Uh, OK, so diffi one difficulty we have there probably is the time, time evolution of the, of the interference. And of course, the last one, which is a uh, contact pantograph catenary, it should be directly introduced to the receiver. It will impact only in, in a specific link. So there is one thing I didn't discuss a lot, but of course, you've got different. It's not a symmetric channel like for the radio channel. It's, it's something asymmetric. So the interference you have for the uplink is not the same as the one you have for the downlink. And of course, there are on this case of the uh, of this contact, you have statistical models that work. So to conclude, we have identified three types of models. We have identified where we can uh, introduce them, and the results we will present we focus mainly on type one, which does not necessitate the models of the interference, but works directly with the interfering signals. Uh, which is easier and of course especially for type 1 massive we need some more studies because there are not models that are accepted everywhere and yes that's what i said just previously so thank you for your attention okay thank you very much uh, laurent um we have uh one uh, time for one question if uh, if uh, needed um, i don't know if there is some question in the chat uh, i have a problem to open my chat no there's no no, no question, question in the chat right now uh, so, if there is no question, uh, I think we have uh, some minutes for a coffee break, <laughs> individual coffee break, uh, before the um, the the other uh, the other presentation uh, presenting the the platform. Um, so we we will meet again at uh, eleven. Uh, The, the, I think uh, uh, we we leave open the, the link uh, just to. So okay. see you in uh, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs>